How's your mental health? I'm listening with Dan Reynolds from Imagine Dragons. Yeah, I don't think there's an age that's too early because really, if you take away the word therapy, what's happening is, hey, let's communicate with other people. Let's communicate what you're feeling. It's just communication skills. So it's like basically you're just saying, hey, there might be some conversation that you can have with X person that's going to help you. And because it helps you to evolve as a human. Explore more at imlistening.org. Whether you're a seasoned investor like me or new to the game, it's time to sit down, roll up your sleeves, and find out new ways of making money. Subscribe to WBBM's new podcast, Gains with Andy Gersher, where I talk to experts from all over the country to get fresh perspectives on meme stocks, cryptocurrencies, AI, and so much more. Subscribe to Gains with Andy Gersher on the Odyssey app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. They blitz him, he throws it left, Lamb's in the corner of the end zone, and he walks under the ball. Touchdown to C.D. Lamb, his second, and he comes up grinning at Dalton Schultz and shrugging his shoulders saying, that was too easy. It is now time for Star Up, Star Down. You can't be in a bad mood today. A perfect Sunday, hopefully a great start to your week. It's cold out there. It is cold, so make sure the coffee is extra hot. It's Sean and RJ here on DFW Sports Station. Troy Hughes running things as always. Star up, star down at 877-881-1053. And my first star up is going to go to C.D. Lamb, who has been in all the headlines be really for the wrong reasons. Fines and taunts and jerseys being untucked yesterday, 6 for 94, almost 16 yards a catch, two touchdowns. He was targeted seven times and did all that damage as he was one of 10 different Cowboys to catch a pass from Dak Prescott. Star up to C.D. Lamb. And I was just looking at his jersey the whole time. I was like, is it untucked? Is it tucked? Oh, yeah. Is it untucked? Tough to tell. Six for 94 and two in the first half. And then I sent out, I swear I did not do this on purpose. I swear. There was a play in the game where it looked like a defender had tried to rip his helmet off or go high towards him again. And I said, these these defenders just love C.D. Lamb's throat. They love, like, going up there. And, gosh, the internet came back at me. Uh Oh, what they say? They said, awareness. Where's your awareness? People love Lamb's throat. I said, fine, head and neck. They love the head and neck area to break it down, like we're playing Operation. But I was I was referring to the Vikings game when he got yeah. choked out on the sidelines by Harrison Smith. C.D. Lamb, jersey untucked or tucked, six for ninety four and two in the first half. Amari Cooper told us through the G Bag Nation last week that C.D. was not completely healthy against Denver. He was yesterday. Star up to him. Uh, it was a it was a very big star up. Uh, for, uh, and, for and I was thinking to you, I was like, did did he trade him? Did RJ Choppy mm. pull off the move in his fantasy league where he was offered a package for Amari Cooper and C.D. Lamb, and you're losing out on all these fantasy points? I did not make oh! that trade last week. Oh, that's was, a good thing. I was going to get Thielen and Waller <laughs> and uh, somebody else. Harris. Harris. Off the, the Patriots. Patriots. Uh, but I did not make that trade uh, because, you know, there is sometimes where you want to you enjoy having guys on the team that you follow the most. Yes. Uh, that, that that especially that are that are good players. Not like, hey, give me the third third tight end on the team because uh, it, it, it helps. It helps enjoy the game more. That's one thing. Fantasy sports has ruined diehard fanhood. It really has. Um, By the way, CD dealing with an arm contusion. So we're going to look to get an update on that this morning. We'll ask Brad Sham and we'll ask Nick Eatman as well. That was kind of the only injury Mm -hmm. that we worried about. Uh, He was talking about the arm injury against the Falcons after the game. So it was an arm contusion for C.D. Lamb. Uh, And let's see if he got the exact quote in here. He said, it was like a Charlie horse in my arm that kept nagging me. Uh, And he still managed to rewrite the franchise record book the fourth player in team history to reach 10 touchdown catches in the first 25 games of his career. Joining Bob Hayes, Des Bryant, and Terrence Williams. Oh, wow. Who would have ever thought that? He's the Chris Carter of the Cowboys. All he did did was catch touchdowns. Yeah. 
That's really all he was. Good game for CD. No doubt about that. The offense hummed, uh, and, and it was a really good uh, game. Defensively, they had one player. Yeah. Ah, you always talk about Diggs. Everybody talks about Anthony Brown in either good or bad ways. You know, we don't mention Jordan Lewis all that much, but Jordan Lewis, our boss texted about him. Uh, tons of people tweeting and, 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 and hitting us up about Jordan Lewis's game. But early on, dude was really good. Snap back, Armstrong coming. He throws it quickly right knocked down. Jordan Lewis knocks it down out of the hands of Pitts. Ryan in the gun. Back, looking middle. Flushed out, on the run, stopped, side arms. It's broken up. Is it Lewis again? It is. It's Lewis again on the pass intended for Gage. Two in a row. Man, uh, Jordan Lewis had himself, especially especially a first half, uh, but he had himself uh, a really nice game here. Yep. Uh, when, when he was targeted early on, uh, early on he was targeted on four straight possessions, and they were four straight incompletions. Four straight passes, I should say. Four straight passes, not possession. Yeah. Four straight passes. He was targeted. All of them were incomplete. That was big. That was big for this Cowboy team. Uh, so you got to give a star up. Got to give a star up to Jordan Lewis. Defensive player of the game, in my opinion. Three total tackles. Three passes defended. And he had an interception. His interception was the one I was rooting for the most. I was rooting for Jordan to get his pick even more than Diggs. Uh, Diggs gets number eight to lead the NFL, but Jordan Lewis deserved it the most. And I'm also tying him in to a star up that I thought, you know, it sounds funny when you lose by 40 that there could be like a key moment in the game for Atlanta. But there, there were third and fourth down passes in the first quarter that went towards Jordan Lewis. He broke them up. A third down pass, a fourth down pass. So it was fourth and seven. The game at this time, and I thought I thought this was a big mistake on Atlanta's part, and the TV broadcasters never stopped talking about this moment. It was fourth and seven. Instead of kicking the 50-yarder, at the time, it was seven to three. So that could make it that could make it a seven-six game. Their kicker, Koo, if you know him from fantasy, has made eleven straight mm. from fifty plus. And I just thought, here, here's my plan if I'm Atlanta going into this game. Let's try to keep it as close as possible for as long as possible. Make them uncomfortable. Make them start thinking about the Bronco game. Make their fans uneasy. You know when you hear that 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 murmur, that whisper in the crowd? That's a feeling of uneasiness. And it was a fourth and seven on that. I thought that was a little bit too far. Kick the field goal. Make it 7-6. Have it a one-point game. Instead, the Cowboys get the ball and... They end up scoring and blowing the doors off. But I thought that was just a minor moment in the game. That's a game management thing. Kick the field goal. Make it 7-6. Keep it close for as long as possible. And said they had the 4th and 7 in completion off to the races. That's the Cowboys forcing them to do what they may not have wanted to do based on the Cowboys offense. The yep. Falcons knew they weren't going to stop them. Yep. This had they were they if they were going to win this game, they knew they had to go for it. And there. after that moment, Atlanta was minus 17 in yardage. They were minus 17 in yardage for a while in this game after that moment right there. And then star up to Mike McCarthy's fourth downs. This is why we said last week, don't go away from what you are. So after their fourth and seven incompletion broken up by J. Lou, McCarthy had a fourth and five from the Atlanta 33 in the first quarter. Remember, you got a new kicker, C.D. For 21, okay? That resulted in Zeke's one-yard touchdown at the very end of the drive. You were 0 for 4 last week against Denver. It did not stop McCarthy. Fourth and three from the 25. They go for it. He th- Dak throws a rope to Gallup. That results in another short Zeke TD run. So the third and fourth down attempts yesterday at one point, Falcons were 0 of 5. Cowboys were 6 of 9. Star up to the fourth down mentality from Mike McCarthy and the team's execution of it. Well, uh, yeah, it, yes, and, and and I'm glad they kept it. I'm glad they kept uh, the pressure on. They didn't get scared of, of fourth down based on what happened last week. Uh, I love to see that. Star up to Dan Quinn. He won a game when he was up 28-3. to <laughs> That is big. You know, you love to see something like that. You know, I, I know everybody thought at 28, that, that score got to, you know, you, hey, what's going to happen here? 
Are we a little scared? A little scared here with that, that, uh, this thing? Falcons Twitter sent out the message. Yeah, we know. We know. We know. 28-3. Did any part of your brain for, for like a half a second say, I kind of don't want it to be 28-3? to three. There's yeah. something about that score. <laughs> like I thought that for like a split can second. Can we go for two here, please? Yeah, can we go for two <laughs> and, and get that out of here? So star up, star down, continuing at 877-881-1053. Without Randy Gregory, you were going to have to rely on others. We didn't realize it would come up big on special teams. Jerry Jones, man crush, coming through on our sister station. Dustin Colquitt. Can we just get the entire game like rebroadcast for the remainder of the show from Legrande? You heard the one week ago callback. Poetic justice after the Malik Turner block, Dorrance Armstrong blocks his, and Nashawn Wright, who had the ball deflect off of him to give it back to Denver early on third quarter, 36 3. The Cowboys give, we got to give Bones his props. Right? We gotta we gotta stand up for bones. The Cowboys have blocked three punts this year. They blocked one total punt during the Jason Garrett era. They have three this year, back to back weeks, but Jerry Jones was almost upset about this play after the game. Right before we blocked that uh, uh, kick, uh, right before that we had uh, kind of the kicker had gone on the ground on the previous punt. And I was cursing and carrying on and said, our guys don't know how to deal out of there. They're getting too close to the kicker. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to take this. And then the next thing you know, they just tear it up and make a, a defining play, one of the defining plays. So uh, I better do just as uh, everybody else does and growl under my breath. I know exactly the play he's talking about. It wasn't going to be a flag, but there was a little bit of contact made with a Cowboy special teams player on the mm-hmm. ground, and the Falcons punter went to the ground. Wasn't anything too harsh, but that's what Jerry was talking about. So Dorrance Armstrong, star up, had a sack, three quarterback hits, and three total tackles. Yep, first player in team history uh, with a sack and a punt block in the same game. Wow. Very, very cool. Uh, Terrell Basham had that with the Jets in 2019. He was the last one league wide uh, to do that. Wow! Uh, so that very very cool from Dorrance. Uh, you know, this is a tough play for me because you know about all we have from the University of Tennessee and the NFL now are punters. Oh, and the Colquitt brothers are legends, <laughs> and and that was that was a Colquitt uh, that got uh, that got his punt blocked uh, by the the, 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 the Dallas Cowboys, yeah, Cowboys. Uh, in this one. Uh, so yeah, but you got to give a star up to Dorrance. Uh, on that one. I gotta give a start to the offensive line. Uh, 72 snaps, zero sacks, one tackle for a loss, two quarterback hits. Wow. It's a hell of a game by the O-line. Well, most of them. I, I'm not getting into that. At this, no. he's, he's the new Anthony Brown most and Jalen them. Smith, and he's the new KP, and he's the new, uh, give me a Ranger. Uh, nobody can name a Ranger, so I'm not going to even <laughs> give you one. Uh, he's the Rugi new for a while. He's the new Rugi. That that's what he is. He's the guy that you pick on. I don't know. I, I, I the, the, the line played great. I can't give him a star down. Okay, okay, I will. Uh, Connor Williams gets the big fat. If you said you had two star downs at least, so well, if one, Connor uh, Williams wasn't one, then who are the other two? Well, I got one here. Uh, Mike McCarthy on Micah usage at defensive end. Okay, that's my star down. If he's not playing 100 percent of the snaps at defensive end from here on forth, from here forth, did you see from here on forth, from here on, for, did you see the move that he put on that right tackle? That was something that was electric. Cowboys up 28-3, one ten left in the half. They fake the run and he is blasted by Parsons. A blitz sack and a fumble, but it's recovered by Atlanta's right tackle Caleb McGarry. Man. All you fools want to see him, you know, hanging out there in the A gap, just mugging. Nope, not into it. Put him on the edge. Stand him up on the edge. 
put his hand down in the dirt on the edge, whatever you want to do, get him wide. Get him. Well, that sounded bad. Get him <laughs> wide. Yeah, people get on me for talking about CD's throat. Yeah. You're talking about getting guys wide. Yeah. Get him wide and let him go. Let that dog eat. Do you have the snap count yet on, on where he lined up? I do not. I do not. I was I'm waiting for it to get to uh, be posted on so on Twitter. And again, you can you can line him up at linebacker, you know, as that, you know, guy standing on the line of scrimmage outside of the defensive end. So he, he's up there. He's going to rush the passer. Of course, Jerry's talked about nonstop on this radio station about him blitzing from up the middle. Uh, but Micah Parsons yesterday uh, doing work as well. He had some awesome quotes after the game. He was talking about how happy the team was. They got Dan Quinn the game ball. The eruption in the locker room afterwards. Micah said, this game should send the message we ain't to be effed with. I don't think... Q, Dan Quinn, cared about the Falcons. I think he just really wanted to come out and punch somebody in the mouth this week. I've never seen him so red in the face. Mm. He wasn't worried about that little S. Restrictions are being relaxed. Mandates are being removed. County supervisor says it may be time to let people make their own decisions. But are we really out of the woods? We have to remember that this is a global thing. COVID-19 has changed our lives forever, and information is still the key to staying healthy. All of the times you've likely been exposed to the coronavirus. Get the Coronavirus Daily Podcast. One podcast with all the information you need. Get this Odyssey original podcast on odyssey.com, the Odyssey app, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Stitcher. And be sure to hit the subscribe button. Hand off, Elliott. No, Prescott still got it. Rolling left, pumps, runs to the goal line, and is pushed in for the touchdown. Man, don't do that. Be careful. Dak Prescott's touchdown run makes it 43-3. to Tell me that everyone in DFW didn't freeze and hold their breath when he started taking off at that goal line, and you're like, get up. Just get up. And Dak was hyped up with the fist pump. He wanted to, of course, recover uh, from the awful, maybe the worst game of his career against the Broncos. But I gave a half a star down to Dak running that football in. I was like, get him out of the dag on game. That was on fourth down as well with that TD run. But overall, of course, a star up for Dak in three quarters. 24-31, 296, two touchdowns. No picks. The passer rating was 128 with the rushing touchdown as well. The beautiful, the fadeaway rainbow throw to C.D. Lamb where it was like, I'm going to throw it to a spot. You be there. That was on third down. Had pressure in his face, Mm -hmm. and he lofted up that rainbow to C.D. to make it 28-3. to In the first half, Dak was 18 of 23 for 219. Two touchdowns, seven different receivers. He would end up hitting 10 different guys for the entire game. Easily, easily his best game of the year. Not even close. Really? Not even a second. There's not even a second place. This was so far and away. Everything By the numbers? By everything. By the numbers, by the eyes, by the old school, by the new school. Everything showed this was, without question, his best game of the year. He had a 93 QBR. Space out of 100. Out of 100. See, I would have named the Tampa game as better. I guess my expectations for Tampa and their defense a lot higher. Mm. Uh, he threw four against Carolina. Uh, he had a run of at least three straight touchdown passes with Philly, Carolina, the Giants, uh, and the Patriots. But you're saying, see, those these numbers seem to really weigh a rushing touchdown, even if it's from five yards out. Well, it adds to your the points added. You know, so you, yeah. So anytime you pick up a first down using your feet, huge. Yeah, it's huge. It really, really adds to you because it shows the complete player that the quarterback can be, uh, and th- and it doesn't. You know, it doesn't hurt that you don't. It just doesn't help. It's like uh, what was that on the SATs? If you don't answer, it doesn't really hurt you, <laughs> right? But if you get it wrong, it does. Right. And if you get it right, I mean, holy cow, that really, really helps. So. Uh, it, it does weigh. It does weigh a little bit, but yeah, this was he was fantastic yesterday. Dak on his TD run after the game. Yeah, I mean, I had to reestablish some toughness. You know, I mean, uh, rolled out had a, had an option to pass. I felt like it was an obvious hold. I was actually getting ready to dive and just didn't want the ball to go off a guy's leg or something like that. And it, it's goal line. I told you guys, I'm gonna go back to what just my instincts and, and going to get the touchdown of the first down, but being smart about it. Mm, Jerry Jones said that's a no no. 
Jerry said he did not want that to be taking place this year and maybe even for the rest of Dak's career, especially in an absolute blowout. Jerry on Dak's legs after. I have a concern when Dak uh, does take it in, and uh, uh, it all goes to uh, what happened to you. I was glad to see Cooper Rush get some snaps up. I really thought uh, that, that was good. I thought uh, the way uh, we uh, left him in last week, I thought the coach might leave Dak in the fourth quarter <laughs> this week. Thank you. That's yeah. tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. You all right there? Yeah, tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> Oh, I like that little zinger from Jerry. I thought maybe McCarthy was going to leave Dak out there for the entire fourth (laughs) quarter. Thank God. (laughs) Thank God Atlanta submitted with Josh Rosen first uh, as he uh, added to the interception party. But star up overall for Dak Prescott. Well, look, and and, and, yeah, and and getting him out of there, as soon as Atlanta moved Rosen into the game. What would have happened if Matt Ryan came out for the next series? uh, Dak probably would have came out too. Um, Oh, there's a, there's a chance. There's a better chance that you know. Obviously, he wouldn't have just based on the score, right? But you know, if the other team gives up, then you give up. The moment they put the backup quarterback in, they are conceding the game, and and at that point, you generally concede the game from your end. I'd have to go check. Did Mac Jones play the entire game yesterday? I'm gonna go look real quick on that. Eight seven seven eight eight one one zero five three Autoflex. Not. Oh, that's right. Hoyer came in for three passes. Who did? Hoyer. Hoyer. Autoflex leasing Fantex. All right, let's get to the Tolos. There's so many star ups. I had to make a first and a second team. This coming in. <laughs> from, yeah, there's a second team star up. Okay. From BR. His first team star up was Dak C D, Pollard, Micah, and J. Lou, Jordan Lewis. Second team, Anthony Brown. He deserves a star up. Diggs. Dorrance Armstrong and Nashawn Wright for the special teams play and the low star down, the lone star down that everyone is citing is Connor Williams, the left guard. Uh, More penalties. Fox highlighted one play where he was beaten badly. The NFL leader in penalties. All these stats are coming from Bobby Bell. NFL leader in penalties last year had 11. Jedrick Willis. Connor Williams is one short of that. With eight games to play. NFL leader in accepted penalties, Connor Williams, 10. NFL leader in total flags, Connor Williams, 13. NFL leader in penalty yards, Connor Williams with 110. So Connor Williams is getting the start. Now he's been penalized 30 yards more than any other player in the league. And he's responsible for a league leading 18% of his team's penalties. And with Connor McGovern getting all this. Cool fullback love. The Tolos have been asking us for a while. We have to do it. We have a responsibility now with Jerry tomorrow at 830 to ask, uh, why not Connor McGovern over Connor Williams at left guard? So we'll go ahead and ask it, but Connor Williams getting picked on yesterday. And also correction there, Connor McGovern fullback. No, Connor McGovern fullback, halfback, center, tight end, guard, (laughs) and in the slot yesterday. He played all those yesterday. He did? He was in all of those positions at least one time during the game. All right, let's get to this star down. But is it a star up because of what R.J. Choppy said last week that the numbers showed was going to happen? Here's a handoff to Elliott. Oh, he fumbled the ball. Flag comes flying in from behind. Big scrum at the 15-yard line. Elliott was off and running. Falcons have recovered the football on a fumble. By the way, that flag was on Connor Williams. So you said it was coming, and thank goodness that it happened in this type of situation. A blowout, right? Yeah, Zeke was at peak fumble probability last week. (laughs) Guys, I can't believe it. There's a stat for that. (laughs) All right, Didn't know that was was the case, but there is. Uh, He was at peak fumble probability entering last week, Uh, which means that if you wanted to go bet on this, you can bet on this too. That Zeke was going to fumble. Wow. It would have been in your best interest to say yes in each of the last two weeks because he hadn't really fumbled at all. And he was due. This is just the nature of the NFL. Sometimes you're just due for things. And Zeke was due. And I'm glad that it happened uh, in this game. Because if it happened the last game in a crucial spot early on and Denver goes up 30 to zip at some point, and, you know, we could always point to that. But in this, in a 43 to 3 blowout, when you score 29 in one quarter, nobody cares. Yep. 
Nobody cares. Get your fumble out of the way. Get your interceptions out of the way. Get your 11 penalties out of the way. Connor Williams, by the way, he's got the same amount of penalties this year as Trevon Diggs. Nobody would talk about that, though, because <laughs> Connor Williams is the new Jalen Smith that everybody wants to. Why do to. you have this, this, this natural personality reaction to? Uh, it is interesting. You, you always try to take up for... Well, if I say that, it's going to make you sound like a much better person than you are. But you always have this reaction to stick up for the little guy, the one getting picked on. I know. And God I, forbid. And, and I'm, I, I'm, the, I'm like the Robin Hood. And I would not uh, think oh, you oh, in oh. high school were looking at the poor kid no, getting picked on. No, I was bullying the crap out of him. And you always do this, this natural reaction when everyone is picking on one person or going with this yeah. one narrative. You have this instant reaction to go reverse of it. And when someone's praising somebody, I have the instant reaction to tear them down. <laughs> yes. And why is that? Because I'm a gambler. And you always bet against hype. Uh, and you always bet on the people that they are undervaluing. That to- is rule number one of gambling. Tolo Steven, huge star up, has to go to McCarthy, guys. He got his team refocused after last week, told his captains to receive if they won the toss. That's true. First time all year. He said, get the football mm-hmm. and let's go down their throats. Not CD's throat. Let's 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 set a tone. Aggressive on fourth downs. Use his timeouts wisely. I love that at the end of the first half. I was like, there you go, coach. That's how you burn a timeout. You want to get the ball back. You got timeouts to burn. Go ahead and burn them. Didn't even need to get the ball back into Dak's hands because Dorrance Armstrong punked the block that Wright recovered in the end zone. Pulled starters at the right time. Perfect game. Steven with a star up for Mike McCarthy. So there we go. Star up, star downs here on Sean and RJ. Let's take a look around the rest of the league. At first, you may think this is a bad result. No, this is what we wanted to happen in D.C. First to 10 at the 35, Brady throwing over the middle. That one's picked off. This time by Bobby McCain at the 40. He is run down at the 32-yard line. An overthrow by Brady and his second interception of the quarter. That was the call on Washington Radio. What happened to Tampa Bay? Again, should make you feel better about the Denver debacle because the Buccaneers, after a bye, Mm. They got, I mean, Ugh. they got worked in this game 29 to 19. They lose to the football team. And Tommy was throwing Tommy a, little, boy. a little hissy fit afterwards. And I like Tom. We've all grown to like Tom more, but he was acting like a little B, a little Brady yesterday in the post game presser. He tried to leave like 40 seconds in. Is that it? Is that it, guys? And the PR guys like, Tom, you, you kind of got to stay a little bit longer. A minute, 43 seconds. The postgame presser for Tom Brady. Bruce Arians called his team stupid and dumb in terms of the penalties. Arians called out Tom for the two interceptions. He throws for, I mean, the, the yardage in this game for Brady. Mm. I started him in fantasy. Thank oh, no. you. 220 yards. Did end up throwing two touchdowns, but the football team improves to three and six. We wanted the Buccaneers to lose. They fall to six and three. Plus, they got the head-to-head against us going forward. I've got two Brady interception little nuggets here. One, 18 TDs, zero picks in the red zone this year. 18 TDs, zero picks. Wow. Also, two first-quarter interceptions for him, first time since 2012. He's thrown two first-quarter interceptions. First quarter? Yeah. Uh, you know he was not uh, he was not great early on, and and you you get behind the chains, you get behind on the score like that. It is tough to come back in the NFL when you're down big. Uh, even though Washington is not great, even though Washington does not have the same defense uh, that they had last year, maybe that's because Chase Young was skipping workouts in the offseason to go uh, do commercials. Who knows? Chase Young waves off the cart after it looks like his season ended. And then a big injury the Cowboys Twitter was talking about. Vita Vea gets hurt. Looks like he could be done for the year. So you look against Tampa, you look for any positive sign to run the football against them in that run mm-hmm. D and Vita Vea going down is one of them along Huge. with Chase Young yeah. getting hurt. Yeah, that's big. Look, it's big. I mean, anytime you lose players, especially big nasties up front, uh, it becomes difficult. Um, they, they had the great – last year they had the great secondary and the great up front and the great linebacking core. Uh, this year the defense doesn't even seem nearly as good. How about this game working out perfectly as Cam Newton returns in style? 6'5", 245 pounds, three-time Pro Bowler Cam Newton. Newton's going to run right in the grass, breaks a tackle. (laughs) McCaffrey, (laughs) Newton, everybody (laughs) celebrating, touchdown right side. Cam runs one in, red zone. 
throws for a touchdown as well. And the Carolina Panthers do us a humongous favor, beating the Arizona Cardinals 34 to 10. Now, keep in mind, I got a lot of people tweet me, Arizona over it. Guys, they didn't have their quarterback and their receiver. No Kyler, no Hopkins for the second straight week. They got away with it against San Fran with Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy got hurt in this game. 34-10. What we care about is Arizona falling to 8-2. and two. Yep, that's big. Uh, by the way, Carolina has won six straight over Arizona, all by double digits. What? Yeah, when they when they played it, six straight and all by double digits. It's 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 a wild, that's wild. That's amazing. Really. Uh, but, you know, I wondered how they were going to utilize Cam, if they were going to utilize him at all this week after they signed him. Uh, but, you know, use, the way they used him in those, you know, red zone packages and such. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was really clever. Makes so much sense. Really good idea. Really, uh, Matt Rule's a good coach. Uh, and he figured, good coaches figure out a way to use the personnel that they have. And Cam Newton has unique abilities that he had that he he specific that are specific to him. He's still a beast physically. Absolutely. So if you can find a way to use him in the red zone like that and be able to get some scores out of him, awesome. One receiver split wide right, back to throw, looking left, looking, throwing into the end zone for Lamb on the left side of the end zone, leaping, caught it, touchdown Cowboys. Sean and RJ on a glorious Cowboys Monday. Thank you for starting off your day and your week with us being a Tolo. That is what Turn It On, Leave It On stands for. My first star up was for CeeDee Lamb opening drive touchdown. Cowboys went 8 for 73 with CeeDee's 13-yard touchdown on third down. He had that opening screen, the 37-yard screen. It was the Cowboys' first opening drive touchdown in their last six game. Zeke had an awesome block on the drive. There were two dangerous Dak throws. No one's going to talk about this. Dak Dak should have been picked, could have been picked with one of the throws. Then he threw a scary second attempt, but it ends up in the end zone with C.D. Lamb. And my star down for C.D. is what he did to Dak's face. Mm. Did you see the bruise? What is that going to look like this morning as C.D. accidentally headbutts Prescott on the sideline, and Dak afterwards said, yeah, that was the hardest hit I took all day. I'm thinking when I'm seeing this, I'm like, bro, like you got to wait for the zit to get a little bit more ready to pop before you just go ahead and scratch that thing off. Like you can't tell me that you didn't think dude had like some some, some ingrown hairs or a, or a zit that he was trying to pop, but he decided to just take his knee, scratch that off, and I'll throw some Neosporin on it, or is it Neosporin? Neosporin. And I'll just destroy that thing. But no, that evidently was a headbutt. Yeah, it was a headbutt from C.D. Lamb's helmet. The other things uh, that happened around this game, no more red stripe. So thank God. The Tolos Get rid of that thing. Tolos couldn't blame that. Uh, yes, thank you to the military with all the haters uh, saying get the red stripe off the helmet. No Undertaker to jinx it. He came on yep, our get show. Get rid of him too. Uh, he came on our show last week. RJ setting that up. And the curse of the announcers continued. Did you know, and I'm trying to look this up, Greg Olson and Kevin Burkhart had the call of this game again. Same crew as last week for Fox. Every game that Greg Olson has been calling has been a blowout. Do what? He hasn't called a close game. So if Greg Olson, the former tight end from the Carolina Panthers, is on your game, someone is going to get beat down. It was the Cowboys last week. It was Atlanta this week, and they made some video game comparisons to the way we put it on the Falcons yesterday. This is like you're playing Madden on easy, and things are just going really right for you. It's 36-3. to You don't see that in an NFL game in the first half of football. This is one of those games when you're playing Madden when all of a sudden you hope if you hit the wrong button, like the control turns off or like the console turns off, player one has exited the game. <laughs> That's kind of what you're hoping happens here. Wow. That took me back. I'm like, oh, yeah, please, something happened to the console. The Nintendo, we got to blow inside yeah. the game or smack the top of the box. Please let this thing freeze up so the victory doesn't count. That's a rage quit. Yes. That's, that's a rage quit a rage here. Quit. You know, that's what that is. Yeah, great. I, lo- I like Greg. Great comb over. Ma- magnificent comb over <laughs> uh, on Greg Olson's part. But, yeah, that's interesting that he's never called a close game. Yeah. Really, really odd. Rookie like, broadcaster, but we're like, we're, we're halfway through. Not we're like we are halfway through the season. We are, and and in the NFL, there's not a whole lot of blowouts anyway. Like this is an eight and eight league. I mean, how many of these games come down to eight points in general by one possession? 
And and there you go. You, you see Greg Olson basically being a part of all of it. All right, let's stack up the Cowboys against everyone else. We already told you what happened in the division. Philadelphia goes on the road and beats down the Broncos. The football team upsets Tom Brady, literally upset Tom because he had to throw his, you know, minute and a half hissy fit in the post game where he didn't want to talk to the media after two first half interceptions. The Buccaneers lose. Almost almost a perfect Sunday. I I, I, I would have qualified it as a perfect one if this game didn't happen like this. Rodgers gets motion from Adams to the left. Rodgers handoff. Dylan powering to the goal line. Pienzo for the Yes! Yes. Touchdown! Packers Radio with the call. That's A.J. Dillon, fantasy alert. Go and pick him up because even though Green Bay won, they may be without Aaron Jones for a little bit. Aaron Jones with a sprained MCL. This was a hideous, hideous game where the offense completely disappeared. Green Bay wins. Aaron Rodgers did play. Was he just trying to throw us off last week with Pat McAfee saying, doubt it. And then Vegas didn't change the line, telling us Aaron was going to play. Russell Wilson returning. 20 of 40, 160 yards, four yards a pass from Danger Russ. No touchdowns, two interceptions. His QBR was a 13. Rodgers, 23 of 37, 292, no touchdowns. This was a 3-0 game after three. A 3-0 game after three. We needed Seattle to win this one, but I guess Russ didn't visualize in practice getting shut out <laughs> after three quarters with his little mock huddles and the rest of the corny stuff he does. Yeah, this game threw all of us off because, like you said, you know, Aaron Rodgers said on McAfee last week, yeah, I may play, I may not play, and obviously, once again, he lied, and he did play. <laughs> and on top of that... Misled. Misled, not S- lie. Slightly misled. Big difference. And I got totally fooled by this game on all fronts. I thought Rodgers wasn't playing, and I could have sworn early in the day I was a little bit hungover. But I was like, it's snowing it's at Lambeau. Snowing. Okay, that, see, exactly. And, and then I'm watching the game. There's nothing on the nothing. field. It's all green. And that's my that's my point. That's my point. Like, I tuned into this game. I'm like, where's the snow? It is totally gone. And they teased it. And yes, Sean, you were hungover. You're always hungover. <laughs> uh, yeah, because now that obviously. That looked amazing Saturday night. Was, obviously, yes. they had a tarp over it. They had to have. Uh, otherwise, it'd have been a slop fest with all that, uh, all that it was snow a slop melting. Fest anyway, it was, it was. But like they obviously, I think the NFL made them do that anyway. Once the Patriots decided they were gonna, when they had the grass, they always kept it, uh, you know, muddy basically to slow the other team down. And the NFL changed that. But yeah, I thought like going into this game, like man, I can't wait. Snow football. I know. I hadn't seen snow football yet. Oh, I thought you hated snow football. No, I, I hate rain football. Oh. Okay. Nobody likes rain football. Here's where things stand in the NFC and the NFC East. Let's start with the division. Cowboys are seven and two. Philly is four and six. The Giants and the football team are both three and six. All right. So Philly is second at four and six. We're seven and two. The Green Bay Packers are now the top seed in the NFC. How about their defense? Their defense allows 310 yards a game, and they didn't have two of their top playmakers defensively mm. yesterday. So Green Bay's eight and two. The Cardinals get whooped by Carolina. They fall to eight and two. We are seven and two. The Rams are seven and two. We want them to lose tonight to San Fran. Good luck. Monday night football. We'll see if Odell's put out there as a punt returner. Von Miller uh, making his debut. And then Tampa Bay falls to 6-3. and So we are tied for, how how would you put this? I guess tied for second with the Rams right now at 7-2 and with Green Bay and Arizona above us in terms of the wins. You mentioned the NFC East. Philadelphia, what an awful, awful, awful day and weekend it was for the Eagles. They won. Miami won, and Indianapolis won. Those are the first-round picks they all hold. They all just dropped. They dropped in the draft a little bit. It's a good day. It's a good day for us. It's a terrible day for the Eagles. And Only the Eagles could win a game and make it worse for themselves. How about the, the viral moment of the day, I thought, was Pete Carroll's challenge. Oh, it wasn't his gum? Did you see Pete Carroll? He, he lost his flag in this game. He throws something on the field. I went to the internet, of course, 
because this is going to be the meme and the 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 gif the gif of the day. Is that a computer mouse? Is that a flip phone? Was that his life alert? No, it turned out to be an electric hand warmer that Carol had in his jacket. Couldn't find the flag. Threw that out there on the field. I thought it was one of those containers, RJ, like from the 40s when people yeah. flip open and have cigarettes. And yes. like he flip it open and there'd be <laughs> sticks of gum in it yep. or something like that. But yeah, the electric hand warmer. Those things are fantastic, by the way. I've you never just, heard of them. Oh, my God. It's, it just comes with the USB cord. You just plug it in. You charge it. Then you take it out. Put it in your pockets. So instead of getting those packs that you have to, you know, shake and rattle and roll all the rocks together. No. I just, mean, how bougie are you that you have to you just dude, go buy they're like they're like fifteen bucks. They're cheap. Oh, they are? Oh, they're cheap. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Let's take it to the uh, NFL courts. Jay Glazer reporting that Deshaun Watson tried to settle all twenty two accusations against him in order to make the Miami deal work. Carolina, so there's two different sets of criteria. Carolina didn't need all the cases to be settled. Miami did. Everyone says he wants to go to Miami first, waving, waving the no trade. So Deshaun tried to settle all 22 cases because that was a prerequisite to making the Miami deal happen. Obviously, that did not get done. And Chucky is coming for Roger. Yes. John Gruden is suing yes, the is. NFL for wrongful termination. I can't wait. To see how <laughs> ugly this gets. I can't either. I hope it gets so ugly. He's got FU money and he doesn't care. He's got nothing to lose. He literally has nothing to lose at ho, this ho, point. Ho, 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 <laughs> Santa Claus is here. Huddle up. <laughs> that, that's, that's a perfect it. clip. Yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> the NFL is getting accused by Gruden and his, and his attorney of leaking the email. The attorney said uh, that we are alleging that they had private correspondence that they knew about and they leaked and refused to leak anything else. The only ones made public out of 650,000 emails is the ones about our client. The NFL pressured the Raiders to terminate Gruden. Uh, and according to the suit, John lost the sponsorship deal with Skechers, was pulled from appearing in the Madden 2022 video game, as well as having future employment and endorsement prospects damaged. So I can't wait. I can't wait either. I can't. Either. I hope. I, I and can't I hope, wait. And I'm not to rooting. For, I'm not rooting for Gruden, but I'm rooting against the NFL. Does that make sense? Like John Gruden deserved to get exposed for some of the stuff he said, but I hope the NFL gets caught leaking these emails that it was them that there's proof, and then to see the backlash to it. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, there. He was saying that they engaged to basically in character assassinate assassination now he did enough in those emails yeah to assassinate his own character but that doesn't mean that the nfl had a right to leak those emails uh or or should i shouldn't say have a right and have it but be the should only, have released and have it be the only one right and 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 now gruden's probably not gonna win this He's probably not gonna but if all he gets out of this is the league to release those other other emails if that's all he gets this was a giant victory for America, <laughs> a giant victory, because we get we get rid of Gruden and we probably get rid of Goodell.